this video, I want to talk about finding the inverse of an exponential. I thought it would be best if we reminded ourselves why inverses are so important to start with, and that will walk us right into the inverse of an exponential. We're going to begin by solving these equations. We'll start with x plus 3 equals 7. Certainly a very simple equation. The part I want to remind you about is what the inverse is. So on both sides of this equation, I'm going to subtract 3 because that's the inverse of adding 3. I'm going to do this subtraction of 3 in a different color so that you can see what the inverse is when we apply it. And I'll do that throughout this topic so that you can always see the inverse in action. x plus 3 minus 3 gives us x, and 7 minus 3 gives us 4. Next, we'll solve x over 2 equals 3. To undo the division by 2, we need to multiply on both sides by 2. So 2, and then a set of parentheses to multiply by on the left, and 2, and then a set of parentheses to multiply by on the right. On the left, we have 2 times, and then in the parentheses, x over 2. And on the right, 2 times, in the parentheses, 3. The 2's reduce to make 1, and we're left with x equals 2 times 3, which is 6. Next, we solve the square root of x equals 3. To undo a square root, I'm going to apply a square. So on both sides, I'm going to make a set of parentheses and a square. Inside the set of parentheses on the left, I'll put the square root of x. And inside the set of parentheses on the right, I'll put 3. The square root of x squared is just x, and 3 squared is 9, so x equals 9. Next, we have 10 to the x equals 50. All we need here is an inverse for 10 to the x, and we should be able to solve this problem. Now, we haven't talked about what that inverse is yet, but for sure there is an inverse, and if I do it to both sides, if I apply inv10, I'm just going to write a subscript 10 on that with a set of parentheses to the left, and inv10 with a set of parentheses on the right, I would put in 10 to the x on the left, and 50 inside the parentheses on the right, and taking the inverse of 10 to the x should give us just x on the left. The only question is, what is that inverse? And this is finally where we have arrived at logarithms. The logarithm is the mathematical operation defined to be the inverse of the exponential. Every exponential base has a corresponding inverse, kind of like plus 3 has an inverse of minus 3, and plus 10 has an inverse of minus 10. Now as I read through these inverses, when I say the word something, I'm talking about a set of empty parentheses, left paren, space, right paren. And when I say base 2, that's a subscript of 2. So let's start with the inverse of 2 to the something, which is log base 2 of something. And that something is not sitting in the subscript, it is on the same level as the log. So log subscript 2, and then a set of parentheses. We read it log base 2 of and then whatever's in the parentheses. The inverse of 5 to the something is log base 5 of that something, and we read it log base 5 of. The inverse of 10 to the something is log base 10 of something. Now, we actually write that commonly as just log with no base on it. So log with no base on it is log base 10. We read that log base 10 of or just log of. Finally, the inverse of e to the something is log base e of something. Now, we commonly write that one as ln of something, with lowercase ln. So we very rarely write log base e. When we write ln, we mean log base e. We say that with the actual letters ln of, or we read that as natural log of. We tend to use log or log base 10 quite a bit since our number system and the metric system both use base 10. We commonly use natural log or ln since we use e for continuous growth and decay. One more formula that's important to know is called a change of base formula, and it allows us to convert from other logs to either natural logs or log base tens. This is important if you're using a calculator that only has a log key and an ln key. You can take any logarithm and convert to one of those. Log base b of x is equal to log of x over log of b or natural log of x over natural log of b. Now when I say log of x, it's log left paren x right paren. So I've now filled in the something that I'm saying. 
when you're trying to find a log with an alternate base, you really want the log of x, and you really want to get rid of the base b. An easy way to remember it is that you're taking the log of what you want, which is log x, divided by the log of what you'd like to get rid of, which is the log of that base b. Likewise, it's the natural log of x over the natural log of the base that you'd like to get rid of. For example, we can calculate log base 2 of 5 because we can convert it to either log of 5 over log of 2 or natural log of 5 over natural log of 2. And either way you calculate it, you get approximately 2.322. Now in Desmos, you can also use an underscore to get a subscript for the log. So you can type log underscore to get down into the subscript and then write 2, arrow to the right, and then get 5. Let me show you. Now if you don't have a keyboard in front of you, you're going to want to use the functions panel in Desmos's keyboard. And in the miscellaneous tab of this functions panel, you'll see natural log, log, and log with an alternate base. If I want to calculate log base 2 of 5, I can choose log with an alternate base, put the base 2 on, move my cursor to the parentheses, and type 5. And you'll see I get 2.322. Notice that I could also do natural log of 5, move outside of the parentheses, divided by natural log of 2, which gives me the same thing. Or I could do, in the function menu, log of 5, move outside the parentheses, divided by, and then choose it again, log of 2. All three of those give us the same result, so that's the change of base formula. Let's see how we can use this inverse function. We're going to start by solving 10 to the x equals 50. On both sides, I want to take a log base 10, or just a log. So I'm going to write log of, that's an open parentheses, on the left, and log of, an open set of parentheses on the right. On the left side, inside the parentheses, I'm going to write 10 to the x, and in the right side set of parentheses, I'm going to write 50. So now it reads log of 10 to the x equals log of 50. Now because the log is the inverse of 10 to the x, I am left with just x on the left hand side. Log 50 is a number I can calculate. So I can run over to Desmos, punch in log 50, and out I will get 1.6990. I'm rounding to four decimal places. So one of the key things to catch here is that this step right here, log of 10 to the x, that was the function with its inverse applied. And that's how I get to x. Next, we're going to solve e to the x equals 5. Well, the base is e, so I need a logarithm that matches base e. And that logarithm is the natural log. So I'm going to take a natural log on both sides. That's ln of a set of open parentheses on the left and ln of a set of open parentheses on the right. Inside the parentheses on the left, I'm going to write e to the x. Inside the parentheses on the right, I'm going to write 5. Well, ln of e to the x, I have applied the inverse to the function, and so I should just get out x. And on the right, I just have natural log of 5, which I can, again, put into Desmos and get a result. This is approximately 1.6094. Next, I'll solve 2 to the x equals 12. Well, now the base is 2, so I need a logarithm that matches the base of 2. I'm going to take a log base 2 of the left-hand side, so that's an open set of parentheses, and log base 2 of the right-hand side, so another open set of parentheses. That's log base 2 of 2 to the x equals, and then on the right, log base 2 of 12. Now that log base 2 of 2 to the x, that's a function with its inverse, so that becomes just x, and that's going to equal log base 2 of 12. Now I can calculate that directly in Desmos, or if you'd like to use a change of base formula, or I can write that as the log of 12 over the log of 2. Either way, this gives approximately 3.5850. Finally, we'll solve 1.05 to the x equals 1.48. 
Now the base is 1.05, so I need a logarithm that matches this base of 1.05. So I'm going to take a log base 1.05 on the left and a log base 1.05 on the right. Inside the parentheses on the left, I'll put 1.05 to the x, and inside the parentheses on the right, I'll put 1.48. Now, log base 1.05 of 1.05 to the x is just x because I have applied the inverse to the function. On the right-hand side, I simply have log base 1.05 of 1.48. And even though it looks a little funny, it is just a calculation to be made. And if you don't like that calculation, we can rewrite it with a change of base formula as either log 1.48 over log 1.05, or ln of 1.48 over ln of 1.05. Either way, these come out to be the same thing, approximately 8.0353. So now we've solved a whole bunch of exponential equations.